students. This is lesson four, our final lesson for module two on similarity and triangles, in which we're going to focus on slope triangles. A great quote for today, live as if you were to die tomorrow, but learn as if you were to live forever. Mahatma Gandhi. <clears throat> in the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning targets. I can find missing side lengths in a pair of similar triangles using quotients of side lengths, and I can use similar triangles on the coordinate plane to find the slope it shares. Again, this last one, 2.a, is just a preview of this idea or concept of slope using these similar triangles that we will readdress uh, in the second semester when we're talking about uh, linear functions. But it's, it's a good idea to see how it relates now, uh, and that way it will uh, help um, develop your conceptual understanding of our linear functions when we get there in the spring. So that way you're not seeing all this at the, at the same time. A great activator is triangle A with size lengths 2, 3, and 4. Uh, similar to triangle B that has side lengths 4, 5, 6. And so again, the idea here is to make sure that you are um, comparing cor uh, corresponding sides. So smallest side with the smallest side, 2 to 4, which we know is 1 half or 2, depending on which way we're going. Uh, but if we're going from the smaller one to the larger one, then it's multiplied by 2. 3 to 5 means that we're multiplying by, well, 5 divided by 3 is... 1 and 2 fifths, right? So they are not the same, which means that these triangles are not similar. So triangles cannot be similar because you can't apply the same scale factor to each side of one triangle to get the corresponding sides of the other triangles. And this is an activity that you worked on last year where you were investigating if triangles were similar by the lengths of their sides and what kind of triangles they made for example, acute, obtuse, isosceles, equilateral, uh, hopefully either with using spaghetti or using ang legs uh, to connect different side lengths uh, to create triangles. In quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. A very quick little warm-up. Uh, write some numbers that are equivalent to 15 divided by 2 because it's really important that you get used to seeing the different numbers and then how you're going to cr create quotients of those numbers uh, that will result in the same answer, right? Or the same simplified expression. So 15 divided by 2 can be expressed as uh, 15 over 2, which is an improper fraction. We could also say that it's 7 and a half or 7.5. We could say that it's 3 times 5 over 1, I mean over 2. A lot of variations. <clears throat> okay, so in quotients of sides, we looked at this triangle, ABC, and we know that it's similar to three other triangles, DEF, GHI, and JKL. The scale factors for the dilations have been given to us, and so we discovered that uh, this one, ABC, the length of the short side is 4, so we filled all this in, the length of the medium size is 5, and then the length of the long side is 7. We multiplied this original, uh, these original lengths, by the scale factor to get DEF. So if the length of the short side was 4, then the length of the short side for DEF is 4 times 2, which is 8. And so we filled the rest of this out. But then we took those numbers and we started to compare the ratios uh, to their corresponding sides. So let's take a look at that. So remember, the long side, which is 7 to the short side, notice that we have three different combinations here, long to short, medium to short, but then long to medium. If I take 7 to 4, I get 1.75, because 7 divided by 4, I can put 4 into 7 once, and I get 3 left over, over the denominator of 4, which is 1.75. <clears throat> the medium to short side is really just a ratio of 5 to, oops, sorry, 5 to 4, which we discovered was 1.25. Well, 1.75 and 1.25 are not the same, but that does not mean that these are not similar. We've already been told they are. We need to prove it because right now we're only looking at the same triangle. The key to similarity of comparison of different triangles is comparing 
different triangles corresponding sides and their ratios. So let's take a look at DEF. Remember that uh, the long side, which is 7, is twice as long, 14, and the short side, which is 4, is twice as long, 8. So what's 14 divided by 8? Well, that's also 1.75. And so we notice that these two ratios, or quotients, simplify to a scale factor that is equivalent for both. Okay? Which means that these are similar. A great applet to explore is similar to one that we've looked at before, but now they've given us a couple of scale factors to work with. Less than one and greater than one. We notice what happens. And then we can take that circle and slide it. Notice that no, no matter where I am on this line, it's shared with the other triangles. And it's always the hypotenuse, which means what's left over of these triangles? Only the horizontal and vertical pieces. Okay? So looking at these three triangles, Something that irks me is that, for some reason in the curriculum, when we talk about uh, slope triangles, they're always drawn uh, underneath the, the line if it's going uphill, <clears throat> and often case on top if it's going downhill. Yet, that can make it confusing when we start talking about the ratio of its sides. So for example, if I'm looking at the vertical distance, and let me pull up the directions here, similar triangles, we're going to show that these right triangles, each with its longest side on the same line, uh, which is that hypotenuse for all three of these, uh, what happens when you divide the vertical side with the horizontal side? Notice they said vertical first divided by the horizontal. So let's look at the vertical first. If this is 3 divided by the horizontal 4, then that is 3 fourths, which is 0.75. 3 fourths is the ratio that is proportional to these other two triangles when comparing those two uh, sides, the horizontal and vertical. But let's confirm that. Let's look at this example. E to D vertically is 6. C to D is 8. It's not labeled. It's unknown. But we can count them. And confirm that 6 divided by 8, vertical divided by horizontal, is also 3 fourths simplified. So it's the same ratio, which means they are proportional. That three-fourths that matches all three of these, because if you do this one, you'll also get three-fourths, that three-fourths, that's also known as your slope, because it describes the angle of this line in terms of the vertical movement and then the horizontal movement. And so I always think of this slope idea or this movement as I have to get up to move horizontally, right? So if I'm starting at A, the way I like to draw them is if I'm trying to get to C, is I am going up one, two, not quite up there to C yet, up three. Vertical distance, which are your Y values, right? Vertical Y direction. So that's plus three. I'm going to the right four. That's plus four. So this is a positive three fourths, which is called a slope of three-fourths. Notice that that slope three-fourths is less than one. I wonder what happens if the slope was greater than one. Well, let's take a look. <clears throat> uh, one other activity uh, before that, though, is I asked you all to find some missing sides of these similar triangles by taking the quotients. And again, that goes back to our warm-up where we, we discussed these different representations and how we can still simplify to get the, an equivalent expression. <clears throat> uh, so in your notes, uh, write down these key concepts. If we have the same slope here, then those lines, if they're next to each other, will be parallel. And think about it, if we have this line going through all these parallel lines that are vertical, part of the grid, then we're creating a transversal in a sense. All right, which means that these angles for the triangle are congruent. They're corresponding angles that are congruent. And here's the key concept that I want you to look for in the next couple activities. 
and I'm giving you the answer in a sense to that question from the previous slide, what happens if that slope becomes greater than one, right? So we had three fourths, what happens if it's five fourths or eight fourths, which is two? Well, that line increases or gets steeper from left to right in this case. So to synthesize, <clears throat> what is a slope triangle for a line? A triangle whose long side is on the line and whose other sides are horizontal and vertical. How can you use a slope triangle to find the slope of a line? Divide the length of the vertical side by the length of the horizontal side. Does it matter which two points you use to create a slope triangle? Why? Well, we discovered that any sized triangle, it doesn't matter how far away they are on that um, hypotenuse, they will uh, create the same slope. So no, any two slope triangles are similar, so the quotient of the two corresponding sides will always give the same value. <clears throat> and then number four, why are any two slope uh, triangles similar? Because they are right triangles whose other angles are corresponding angles for a transverse meeting parallel grid lines. Again, there's your corresponding angles for this one, and there's your corresponding angles for this side, and there's your corresponding 90 degree angle. So this is that one where I was showing you the changes or steepness of the slope. So notice how this is a lot steeper. Well, again, if I start down here at this point, I like to go uphill. So one, two, three, vertical first, and then horizontal, one, two. Well, that's up three over two. Well, which one matches the slope of up three over two? Well, that's greater than one. That's pretty steep, right? But if I look at this one, diagram B, I'm only going up one, two, and then going over one, two, three, four, five, six. So vertically two, horizontally six. Well, simplified, that's one third. Look at that, that's less than one, which it's much more shallow. I asked you to do the rest of these and then draw the one that's missing from these six choices. The other last activity I gave you was to construct the slope yourself using the digital technology, the applet. In quadrant three of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. In part A, we're told that these two triangles are similar and to find the value of A divided by B. Well, we know that no matter what size these triangles are, because they share that same diagonal line, meaning their hypotenuse are on the same line, then we can take the ratio of the vertical over the horizontal, and it will be the same for all of them. So I can use that smaller triangle right here and take 2.1 and divide by 1.4 to get the simplified ratio uh, of A divided by B. <clears throat> In part B, line L and K are graphed, and it's asking you which line has a slope of 1 and which has a slope of 2. Well, if I look at L, and I could start here, I could start down here, I could start up here, but if I go up 1, how far over do I have to go to get back to that line? Just 1. So what's 1 over 1? 1. So line L has a slope of 1, which leads me to believe because K is steeper, that that is going to be a slope of 2. Well, let's check. If I start here, I go up 2, vertically, over 1, that's 2 over 1, which is a slope of 2. Remember, just because you don't see a denominator does not mean it's not there. That is the horizontal distance of 1. In quadrant 4 of your math journal, reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning targets, rate your self-confidence, and explain why you gave yourself that score. I've given two additional activities in Khan Academy, so that's a total of 17 activities you have your math labs. There have been four of them, so there should be four sets of four quadrants with the facing notes on the right. And then I've assigned to you on CTLS Assess the district-mandated touchstone that covers this module and the previous module as a cumulative test. All of these assignments are due this upcoming Wednesday. That way I have time to grade them before we take our break. Be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. And as always, remember to be kind to one another and have a great day.